What's up? It's Cody. Um, I'm back with yet another Kotlin tutorial. So last time we were talking a bit about variables and how they worked. And that was kind of setup work for this next tutorial where we are going to talk about null safety, which is arguably one of the biggest features in Kotlin, or at least it is the feature in Kotlin that gets most people to start using Kotlin. And basically the idea is being able to work with this idea of null without your app crashing. So let's go ahead, let's create our uh, file and um, we can we can go from there. So if we open up the project pane again, we will create a new Kotlin file. This one we will just call null safety, null safety, we won't call it demo. And close that out. Minimize that. And then we will, like normal, type in main to create our main function. And now we can start talking about null. So um, in the variables series, uh, I left out this idea of defining what the value is or like what type your variable contains. So uh, we would say like, this could exist and we could say well sometimes this exists sometimes it does not and do a print line this could exist we go ahead we click run and it prints out sometimes this exists sometimes it does not and then what i want to do is i want to set this could exist equal to null so you will notice there's a red squiggly line here. And the reason why is this could exist. Its data type is a non-null string. So in order to define this as a nullable string, uh, we can actually use the colon and then just call it string. So this would be the non-null version of it. And you'll even notice it, it grays it out because IntelliJ will let you remove the explicit type specification. In general, you don't want to specify types unless you absolutely need to. And in this case, we do because we want this string to be nullable. Otherwise, this tutorial is going to be quite difficult to do. So now that we've defined it as nullable, we can set this could exist equal to null. Go ahead, do a print line. This could exist. We'll go ahead and run. And you'll notice everything's fine. It works as you would expect. So let's go ahead. We'll comment out these two lines. And so what I just did there to comment this out was the hotkey is command and then the forward bracket. I always get them confused. I believe that's a forward bracket. But command plus that bracket will comment those out for you automatically. So now that they are commented out, the next thing we are going to do is we're going to do print line, this could exist, and then we're going to access this length parameter. And you'll notice right here, it says only safe or non-null asserted calls are allowed on nullable receiver of type string. Interesting. So if we go back to the non-null version, you'll see we don't get that warning. So null safety um, is baked into essentially the IDE. Um, and then when you look at it and you attempt to say run the code, uh, we'll get a compiler error and it'll say, again, the same exact message. So you, you can't compile the code, but we can say, well, this isn't null. I mean, clearly it's not, the value's right there. So we'll use that double exclamation point, also known as a double bang. Um, we'll run it and it'll it'll work fine. So the length of that string is 45 characters. Cool, so everything's fine, right? Um, well, let's say we set the var, this could exist. Oops, not var. We set the variable, this could exist, equal to null. We go ahead and run it and you'll see exception in main thread. We get a Kotlin null pointer exception. 
and all safety. You'll even notice the IDE highlighted this red for you. As they have been improving on Kotlin, um, they've been improving on IntelliJ as well. So even probably about a year ago at least, like this wasn't there. It would have just allowed you to do this, but because it knows right up here that you're setting it to null, it tries to warn you that there's a problem there um, to try and get you to not do it. All right, so that didn't work. Um, the double bang also, you, you almost never want to use this unless you are okay with getting a null pointer exception, which the majority of the time you are not okay with a null pointer exception. So let's look at some strategies for working around this since we do have um, a value that could be null. So we could use an if statement. So we'll go over this in more detail in our uh, future video where we'll talk about conditional branches and things like that. But for now, we're saying that if this could exist, does not equal null, we'll go ahead, we'll do print line, this could exist dot length. And it allows us to do that. We don't have to use the double bang. And then we can go ahead and run it. And then we will see it prints out 45. Everything is good. We can even uncomment this could exist. It'll highlight it because it knows that it's null, but we can still run the code. Nothing will crash. Everything is everything is great. All right, so another option we have though, um, and I'll go ahead and comment this could exist out again. Another option that we have is what is called a let scope function. Um, and we'll go through all of the scope functions in Kotlin in a, again, a future tutorial, but for this one, we'll just say this could exist, let, and then we say it, which you'll notice it, it'll highlight it here to show you what the data type is, but we'll say it dot length. And then let's be sure to say print line. And then we can go ahead, we can run it, and we'll see again because it because this could be null, it it doesn't let us run the application. All right, sorry about that. I got a call midway through. So if this cut seems weird, that is why. Um, but getting back into this, so our um, parameter, it's again saying that uh, only safe question mark or non-null asserted calls are allowed. And so uh, it doesn't let us build. So what we can do is with this let, if we just add a question mark before it, so we do this could exist question mark dot let, uh, it allows us to compile the code. And I can prove that by <laughs> clicking the run button. And you can see it runs, we get 45. If I uncomment out this could exist where we're setting it equal to null, and then go ahead and run it, everything should run. The only thing that we see is sometimes this exists, sometimes it does not, because this code in this, in this uh, block isn't being executed, as well as this code in this block is not being executed. So that's pretty neat. Um, there's one more thing that I want to show you before uh, we, we finish this tutorial, and that is called the Elvis operator. And what the Elvis operator is, is it um, looks like Elvis. So we would do, this could exist, question mark, dot length. So we're doing the um, null safe version, but we want to have a default. So if this is null, we want it just to default to be zero. So it's called the Elvis operator because if you tilt your head, this kind of looks like Elvis. And the way you can read it is just by looking at it and saying, if this code on the left-hand side is not null, this will be executed. The code on the right-hand side is ignored. On the flip side, if length ends up being null, the code on the left-hand side is ignored, and the code on the right-hand side is invoked. And so we'll go ahead, we'll run this, and you can see over here we have 45, 45, 45 because this could exist is not equal to null. 
But if I go ahead, uncomment that, and again, we see all of um, the IDE is, is yelling at us, telling us that this is null. But since we have all of our null safe operators in place, the application will not crash. It will still run. And if we go ahead and run it, again, this code is ignored. This code block is ignored. This code block is ran. And because length, or because rather this could exist, is null, the code on the right-hand side is invoked, and we print out zero. So that is essentially null safety in a nutshell. Uh, it's a very powerful um, part of the Kotlin language. And with that, there's um, nothing left in this tutorial. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe and click the notification bell if you want updates when future Kotlin tutorials are posted. But other than that, that's all I have for you today. Thank you again for watching. See you in the next one.